are you struggling to draw the eyes and nose in a portrait and getting them in the right proportion? Then this video is for you. Hi everyone, my name is Shachi and I'm an artist that specializes in drawing and painting portraits as well as still life. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to draw the eyes and nose correctly while thinking about its proportion, the underlying structure as well as the value. To draw eyes and nose correctly or otherwise anything on the portrait, you have to think about the underlying structure and then slowly build up the values and slowly build up the whole structure around it. I have already drawn the basic structure of the head like the height and the width and the lines as well as the tilt and what we are going to focus on in this video is how to place the eyes and the nose correctly. Let me walk you through the tools that I use. I have some nitrum charcoal which I have sharpened up like this, some netted eraser and I have white charcoal and a mono eraser. I start by creating a basic structure of the head. I mark some points for the nose and then the other areas like the corners of the nose and the corner of the mouth. I'm then going to use the corners of the nose to find the placement of the eyes. So here, I see that in my image, the corner of the nose aligns with the center part of the eye. So I'm going to use that as a reference. I'm going to continue this process to find out the placement of other features of the face. What I'm also doing right now is thinking about the eyes to nose triangle. I use my nose as a reference and mark the left, the right, the top and the bottom portion of the eye. I'll do the same with the other eye. While drawing, I'm constantly thinking about the planes of the head. What I'm looking at is which part is in shadow and which part is receiving light. Also, don't let your photographs fool you understand the structure of the head and don't just copy values that you see. For example, when I'm drawing an eye and I see that in my photograph an area appears lighter than what it is in reality, then if I understand the planes of the head and the structure of the head, I would know that I'm reading the value incorrectly. I'm going to continue this measuring process. So for every structure I add, I'm going to compare it to the one that are already existing on the drawing. So here in this case, I started with the nose. So my nose is the starting point and everything I put after that would be created based on the location of the nose. As I'm drawing, I'm also adding in some values. Like you see some areas of this drawing is looking darker than the rest. Just putting in some value really helps me understand what portion of the face is in shadow versus light. So if you would like to do that as well, just rub in some wild charcoal and uh, just go ahead with the rest of the drawing. So at this stage, I'm still using a wine charcoal. And the reason is I haven't committed to this stage yet. So if there's something that I want to erase, I can easily do so. So now that I have my basic structure of the head, I'm going to get more specific with the drawing of the eye. What I'm not going to do is take the drawing of one of the eye to completion. I've seen that when I work that way, it completely throws me off. And I've seen in that case, my end result is not that good. So my suggestion would be to work on these features little by little by thinking about the values and adding them slowly and correctly. and always keep your tools sharp. And in this case, since it's a charcoal, what I do is I use a sanding block and a small tray in which I collect the charcoal dust. And I later use this powder charcoal in my drawings. So uh, it's like a win-win, there's no wastage. You can use shop towels or Viva towels to move around the charcoal and this definitely creates a different effect as compared to using a stump. So if that's something you like, do try it out. 
So I used nitrum charcoal for drawing my portraits and I find them very helpful. Like I'm in the habit of like not drawing really fine marks. So I find that when I use nitrum charcoal, I can use shop towels or Viva towels just to move around that charcoal and it doesn't leave like a really dark lines or really dark marks. So that's something I really like about using nitrum. So now I'm working on the nose and the value on the shadow area of the nose and uh, then other portions of the eye. So that's what you have to do, like slowly add the structure, slowly think about the values and then just keep adding them. When you're drawing the white portion of the eye, never make it as light as the lightest light. It's always darker than we think it is. Also, you'll notice that the corners of the eye, like towards the wing of the eye, they're usually uh, a value lighter than the top of the eye. Also, the inner corners of the eye are lower as compared to the outer corners of the eye. So make sure you do not draw them on a straight line. And a quick note about value variations and how to draw them. And this is something I mentioned in most of my videos. And that is that do not draw too many variations in the shadow. And the best way to help you with that is to squint. So do not stare at an area, but squint at the whole drawing, like your whole setup. And then you will see that those value variations don't show up. So in my case, when I was drawing this particular portion that you see like the, the area of the eye and on the right side as well as towards the center, I saw a lot of variations in the shadow. And if I would have drawn all of those, my drawing would not have been good. It wouldn't have been as stable as you see it right now or you will see it towards the end. So I would highly, highly suggest that Think about value variations and do not draw all of them. Like if there's something that you like and you see that it, it really helps your drawing, then that's good. But you don't have to draw each and every value variation that you see. And I keep shifting between my HB, my B and my H pencils. And that's just uh, the way I usually draw or I have been taught how to draw. And the reason behind that is like in case you have some part of the drawing that needs a softer touch, then I use a B pencil. And in case there are some areas that have lots of like dents or holes in it that needs to be filled up so that the value variations look more smooth. In that case, I use an H pencil. So if that's something that you like, uh, you can try it out too. A special note on that nose area, like the shadow shape that I'm sketching in right now, uh, you have to make sure that its value is correct. And this area is usually darker if you have the same light setting. Um, so make sure that it doesn't appear as light, otherwise it's gonna throw off your whole drawing. When drawing in the nostrils, make sure you work on the area around them too. And the same goes for the eyebrows. Whenever you draw them, make sure you have the correct value for the area that's around them. For the highlights in the eye, I'm using a white charcoal. I see in many beginner videos, they suggest you to draw like the shape of an almond for an eye and then draw the circles inside the almond shape. And I feel that that's not really helpful because in that case, you're not thinking about the structure that's underneath the eye. Another important thing that I wanted to mention about the structure of the eye is that it's not flat. So you won't see like a similar value throughout that shape. It's more of a convex shape. So when you draw an eye, think about it like that. So that when you put highlights or whenever you draw those value changes, it's never a flat structure. It's always some kind of a gradation from light to dark Let's also talk about the eyelids. The upper eyelid casts a shadow on the iris. So whenever you're adding a value in the eye, make sure you add a darker shadow, which is cast by the upper eyelid. 
When I'm adding the values in the small portions of the eye and the nose, here's how I'm looking at it. So in this image, L stands for the light area and D stands for the dark area. So you see that in this image, even for those small forms, like I'm thinking about how the form moves from the light and how it moves to the dark. And here's what my final drawing looks like. If you have any questions about the rest of the area, please let me know in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching this video. If you have any feedback or any comments or any question, please feel free to add it in the comments section below. I have also added a link to my website in the description box below. So in case you want to check out my other works, please feel free. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please feel free to click on that red subscribe button and so that you do not miss any of my future updates. So until next time, happy painting and happy drawing and let's keep inspiring each other. Thanks for watching.